You could write a book about the subjects of free cash flow and shareholder yield. In fact, someone has with me to talk about it, William Priest. He's the CEO of Epic Investment Partners here in New York. Hi, William. How are you? Hey, hey. T tell me about the, the book, Free Cash Flow and Shareholder Yield. What is it? How does it inform your view of the market right now? And then we'll talk about three stocks that you like right here. Well, very quickly, free cash flow is the lifeblood of any organization. Businesses run on cash. And at the end of the day, after you've paid all of your expenses, you're left with a phrase called free cash flow. That's cash that's available to reinvest in your business, buy back stock, pay down debt, make acquisitions, or pay cash dividends. Uh, hence, free cash flow has only five possible uses. Uh, this book was about focusing on certain companies that for the most part are inclined to either pay a cash dividend, buy back stock, or pay down debt, all of those are capital return to the investor. So this is essentially a way to collect dividend and a dividend growth rate in equity income securities. And it's the most efficient dividend collection machine in the world. I want to move ahead to a few companies you like right here. You mentioned Danaher. Uh, what's, you call it a serial acquirer and one of the best. Uh, so what do you like about Danaher right here? Well, Danaher is in the process of separating its businesses into two parts that will be independent. Um, they recently uh, made an acquisition of a company called Paul Corporation. Uh, it appeared that they paid a very high price for Paul, but when you look at their cost of capital, which they viewed to be approximately 2%, they think they can get 9% on the investment in Paul. That would be 700 basis points of accretion to essentially the shareholders' equity and the value of the company itself. Uh, one business will be uh, half the size of another. They both ought to rise in total value once separated. If you can get 2% financing, I guess there are a lot of businesses you can make money on. You don't necessarily have to get rock bottom prices. You can still do okay. You need to have a premium for the riskiness of the investor, and it will vary from company to company. So some companies say my cost of capital is X. We add 500 basis points or 1,000 basis points to get to what's called a hurdle rate. They will do deals at the hurdle rate or better. But there's always a risk in doing deals, and though so they want to have some cushion built in over their cost of capital so it isn't basically a losing proposition. Okay, now CVS, uh, the drugstore chain, although it's increasingly becoming more of a healthcare business, we've certain, certainly written favorably about it at Barron's for some time now. What do you like about CVS? I think they're the poster child for ex excellent capital allocation. Uh, roughly 90% of their free cash flow is used to pay dividends or buy back stock, but that remaining amount has an incredibly high return on uh, incremental capital. Um, their free cash flow this year will be something over $5. We think in three years it could be 50% higher, 750. Stock sells for around 100, 103 today. We think it's worth 140 to 150 dollars in three years. And one of the things you mentioned is that because they're paying out so much, uh, so great a portion in, in dividends and buybacks, it, it really means that there's very little incremental capital required to expand the business, which means that the return on that incremental capital is exceptionally high. Good sign for long-term stock investors. You've got it. You get an A. In my, in my course. <laughs> All right, great. Um, I want to mention the third one, which is Cypress Semi. Now, this is, you, you say that you're not typically a tech, uh, a, a big fan of tech stocks, but you like Cypress, and it has a lot to do with autos. What's going on here? Cypress last fall merged with a company called Spansion. The two together will roughly double their market share uh, of selling components into the auto business. Uh, right now, Cypress with Spansion has about $8 of content on every single car. The expectation is that could rise to as much as $100. There's also, because of the similarity of the business, there's about $160 million of cost savings by putting the two together. Company's management has suggested earnings next year would be in the area of a dollar. Ten times a dollar with that kind of growth is very reasonable. They will also pay out 80% of their free cash flow as dividends or share buyback. There are a lot of tears being shed right now in the, in the chip business over no growth for PCs, slowing growth for smartphones, and no one's watching the autos where there's tremendous growth in content. If you get the right kind of chip stock, you can get it on the cheap and pick up some of that growth in cars, yes? We would agree with that. Okay. Thanks a lot for speaking with us. Our Wayne. pleasure, Jack. Thank you.